Congratulations, you just purchased a brand new 2025 Chevrolet Trailblazer from your favorite dealership, your favorite salesperson, and now you're ready to learn all about it. Sometimes when we buy a vehicle, it's a big day, it's a big process. It could be a little overwhelming, and sometimes we forget the things that we learn throughout the day. So this video is just gonna be an example of all the different features and options that you have in a Chevrolet Trailblazer. We're gonna use this RS trim in Marina Blue as our example vehicle. So depending on the trim level you have, you may or may not have some of the options in this vehicle. This is fairly fully loaded. The only thing it does not have is a sunroof and the adaptive cruise control with the Bose stereo system package. Other than that, it has it all. So let's go through the buttons and knobs and let's learn about your brand new 2025 Chevrolet Trailblazer. Starting with our key fob here, you can see you have unlock, lock, remote start, the two times push for the power door in the back and your horn button. So if I press lock, hold start for about three seconds, lights will flash and the vehicle will start up. It'll run for 10 minutes and then it will turn itself off. You can do two remote start cycles and then you physically have to be in the car with the key to press the button to start for the third time. Also, make sure you download your My Chevrolet mobile app because you can remote start, lock and unlock your car from your cell phone included for the first three years on a Chevrolet Trailblazer. When you want to enter the car, you can just walk up. Obviously, you can hit the unlock and lock on your key fob. You also have the little silver button here you can press to unlock the door as well uh, to get in. Now, let's say the battery in your vehicle is dead and you cannot access the car. So I'm gonna turn it off, I'm gonna lock the door and show you that inside your remote, if you press the little silver button and pull the key out, you can use this to open your door. On the driver's side door handle, if you look underneath, you're gonna see a little slot that this key will fit in and you can basically pop off that cover and then you're gonna have a keyhole, which you can use to use your, obviously your key to unlock the door and get in. That horn chirping was basically the alarm system, right? So if somebody was to break the window, open the door, it's gonna sound the alarm as well if they don't have the key. Hopefully that's enough to scare them away. Now, here's your hood latch. You're just gonna pull that to pop the hood. When you come to the front of a Chevrolet vehicle, go to the left side of the Chevy bow tie, straight in. You should feel the latch. You can move that latch to the right, and then you can open up the hood. This car does have a prop rod, so we're gonna put that in its proper location to hold the hood up. And as you can see here, you now have the battery, a nice big red uh, charge point identifier for the positive. And then if you look here, you even have a ground terminal for the negative, so you can jumpstart your vehicle. The Chevrolet Trailblazer has a limited bumper to bumper warranty, three years, 36,000 miles, and a powertrain warranty, five years, 60,000 miles. So pretty much everything under here is gonna be covered for the first five years or 60,000. Main thing you probably need to know how to do under the hood would be your washer fluid, which is gonna be right here. Uh, this is your coolant reservoir, but that has like a 100,000 mile check. This is your brake fluid, 100,000 mile flush. Your oil dipstick to check your oil if you want is right here on the front of the engine, and then your oil filler is on the top. But again, leave this stuff to the dealership, let them service it while it's under warranty, and you can just worry about topping off washer fluid as needed. As we walk down the driver's side of the vehicle, I want to point out with the mirrors, these are manual folding. They do move both ways, forward and back. So if anybody ever bumped it, hopefully it doesn't break. It'll just move if it gets bumped and you can put it back in position. A little further down, you have your fuel door, which is on the driver's side. This is just a press to release, little spring loaded latch. And we still do have a fuel cap on this uh, particular vehicle. When you're tightening it, you'll see right on it, tighten until one click, close this, push, done. Around the back of the vehicle, there is a handle right underneath that you can press. This one does have the power lift gate. You could also do it here from your remote like we mentioned earlier. And if we look on the driver's side panel, there is a button here as well where you could also turn this to max, which is full height, three quarters, which is programmable, or off, which makes it a manual door. Up top here, you have a button to close. You also have a manual handle here, so if you had to do a manual, you can as well. Now, how do you program the door, right? We put it on three quarters up front. We're gonna move this door to wherever you want it, depending on your height, your garage, whatever you want. You're gonna press and hold this button until you see the taillights flash. Once those taillights flash, you hear that little beep. That is now the height. It will open when it's in that three quarter setting. If we were to turn it back to max, it'll open to the maximum height like it just was when we first got back here. 
In the back here, you have a nice amount of storage space underneath the floor, which we can lift up. You will see you do have a spare tire. You have the jack, the tools, the tow hook, everything you would need. Again, with your five year, 60,000 mile powertrain warranty, you do have roadside assistance. So you can either call up 1-800-CHEV-USA, or if you have OnStar active, you just push your OnStar button and they can send the necessary help that you'll need. If you need more cargo space, we have a 60-40 split bench seat in the second row. You got handles on the top. You're just gonna basically press that handle forward and then push the seat down. You can see it's got nice clearance and it folds down without having to mess with headrests and things like that. And one thing that's very, very nice about the Trailblazer, it's the only vehicle we have that will do this. A lot of people might not know that the front seat, if we lift this lever, will also fold flat. So now you have like eight to eight and a half feet of space if you had to put something long in, maybe like a ladder, a snowboard, some skis, whatever it may be, you have a real nice uh, amount of storage space. You can even use that chair there as a table if you were working in the car with a laptop or having lunch or something like that. So a very convenient feature and uh, it's an exclusive to the Trailblazer. To lift the front seat back up, you're just gonna pull the handle here and lift manually, just like that. The back seats, there's no lever, but what I recommend you do is pull your seat belt and then pull your seat back. That's gonna allow the seat belt to stay in front of the seat. A lot of times what I notice, if you go quick and that seat belt gets in front of that, you're gonna actually lock it into the seat, which you don't wanna do. So pull the seat belt out, lift up, pull the seat belt out, and then lift up. You can see in the back seat, you got a couple cup holders with an armrest. In this particular trim here, you'll notice you have a couple USB ports and a household style 110 volt outlet and then as we exit the vehicle you'll notice on your door you have your child lock which is gonna you know disable these handles if you have little children and you don't want them to access that you toggle it with that little switch and there's one on each door as we look back at our driver's door you'll notice you have your unlock and lock a little further down you have your window controls your window lock for the back windows and you have your mirror adjustment which you just select left or right mirror and then use a little directional pad to control it we already talked about the power rear door which you have a button there on our dashboard you're going to see you have a button you can kind of press out and then you have a little post here you can turn this is for your dash lights at night to make them brighter or dimmer headlights are automatic as long as that switch is in auto they will go on off by themselves however you can turn on your amber parking lights or your headlights manually this particular trim has the power seat, pretty self-explanatory, forward, back, up, down, recline, and lumbar, so you can use those and get yourself comfortable. And they all have a manual tilting telescopic wheel. So you bring the lever down, you can go up, down, in, out, wherever you like it, you're just gonna lock that lever back into place, and it's gonna keep your wheel where it's comfortable for you. The Chevrolet Trailblazer does have a push button start, so as long as your foot's on the brake, the key's in the vehicle, Give that button to press and it's gonna turn uh, your engine on and activate all your features inside. As you can see, we have a nice digital screen for our driver information and also one for our infotainment, uh, which we're gonna go through right now. The first thing I wanna point out is your control right here. This is a wheel you can kind of roll up and down. You also have buttons for your phone where you can bring up if a phone was connected. You can also bring up your music where you can change your source. But the fun thing is, and you may not know this, if you press and hold this button in for a couple of seconds, let it go, it's gonna give you different gauges that you can select. So you have a, a view of um, you know, where your fuel gauge is, your coolant temperature is. You have a couple of different options. They have one that they call clean, which is just very simple, very just, you know, essentially a speedometer in the middle of the screen. So a little, uh, little secret button there that not many people know about unless their salesman tells them. Again, just press and hold that wheel down for a couple seconds and then let it go and you'll see those options come up. If we take a look at this screen, you'll notice left side, you have your fuel gauge. Right now we're showing 48 miles of range. A little arrow by that fuel pump lets you know that the fuel door is also, again, the fillers on the driver's side like we saw earlier. If you look at the right side, you'll notice you have seven miles on the vehicle. So right side mileage, left side miles to empty. And then right next to that miles to empty, you'll notice that we have an AWD. That is for all wheel drive. Now, if we look at our center stack here, you're gonna notice there's an AWD button. It's on now, we're gonna press it off, and now you're gonna notice that it says two-wheel drive. 
One of the best features about the Trailblazer and other Chevrolet SUVs is you can turn the all-wheel drive on or off. So on a day like today where it's dry out, it's warm, there's no snow, ice, rain, traction with front-wheel drive is more than enough. You can put it in just front-wheel drive and you can you know save a little fuel in the process. If you need all-wheel drive, you go right back to that button, give it a press, and it's going to activate and turn back on. And it doesn't matter when you turn the system on. You can be parked, you can be in neutral, you can be drive, you can be driving down the highway. It doesn't matter, just give that button a push to turn that system on or off. Another great package these vehicles have is called Safety Assist. That's your lane departure warning, your forward collision alert, your emergency braking, all those sorts of features. Lane departure warning is also a button on this panel right here. Give that a press, you'll see the orange light is lit. That means it's on. When we go back to our driver information center, you'll see those two little lines up on the uh, top left side of the tachometer there. Those were white right now. When you're over 37 miles an hour and the camera sees the lane lines, they'll turn green. When they're green, system's active. You also may see a car appear in between those two lines. That means the forward collision alert sees the car in front of you, that same camera system. If you leave your lane lines and it senses it, it could actually nudge the wheel left and right to put you back in your lane. You'll see the symbols turn orange. You could also see some flashing lights uh, from your dashboard that will flash on the bottom part of the window. That's also part of the forward collision alert that's gonna let you know you're approaching a car and you may wanna start hitting the brake. So extra set of eyes, great safety features. With this button here, you could actually adjust the gap of how soon or late you want those warnings. Obviously, the further out you get the warning, the more likely you'll have a chance to stop if for some reason you weren't paying attention. Some other simple controls by the steering wheel, turn signals and high beams are on the left, super easy. Right hand side wipers. Now if you go down once, it's just gonna do it once. So if you have like a mist or so, it's like one swipe. Up one is your intermittent where you can control the delay. Up two is low, up three is high, and then back down. You also notice you have a little uh, knob at the end here. That's for your rear wiper in the back. You have two speeds for that. And if you pull the switch towards you, it's gonna wash the front. If you push it away, it's gonna wash the back. On the left side of the steering wheel, these are your cruise control buttons. You also have a heated wheel in this particular trim. Right hand side, you're going to have your controls for Bluetooth to answer your phone, hang up a call. We had that wheel we were talking about earlier. There are some buttons on the back side of the wheel as well. You have volume controls on the right hand side. And on the left hand side, you got a couple of radio controls to kind of skip tracks or once you get your preset station set up, those stations left to right by uh, using these buttons on the back of the steering wheel, which keeps your hands on the wheel, eyes on the road works out very well. We have an electronic park brake, which is just a lift. Once you lift it up, it's gonna set your park brake. Now, when you're going to release the brake, you have to have your foot on the brake pedal and you're gonna press down. But don't worry, let's say you set the park brake, you get in, you go to drive, you forget about it and you start to drive. As soon as you start to drive, you're gonna feel the brake, like, oh, the brake's on. Well, as soon as you have that thought, the computer is already releasing the park brake. So you cannot drive away with it on, it will release itself. As far as our shift knob, standard shift knob here, uh, you know, park, reverse, neutral, drive, and then L for low, and then you have a plus and minus here. You can manually go through the different gears yourself. Uh, this does have a nine-speed transmission. Most people, in my opinion and in my experience, never even use this feature, but it's there if you need it. Auto start stop. Yes, this vehicle does have it. You stop at red lights, the computer can say, hey, you know what, let's turn the engine off, save some fuel, stop some pollution for a little bit. If you think you don't want that feature active, you can press this button right here and you can disable it and turn it off for that drive cycle. Every time you start the vehicle, it will be back on. So you'll have to turn it off each time if you don't like that feature. You also have in the center there, a stability track button to turn off the stability system and a sport mode which will give you a little bit different shift patterns and a little more spirited feel to that throttle. Right in front of that, you'll notice you have a 12 volt charger underneath this little door here, a couple of USB ports and a wireless charging pad, which currently has my cell phone on it. When you look at your radio screen, you'll notice the phone icon has a little green lightning bolt lit up. That's how you know the charge is actually functioning. If for some reason that turns amber, it's not charging. Maybe there's something on the pad, maybe you have to reposition it, whatever the case may be. These charging pads have gotten very good over the years. Uh, you know, you put it on there and it should be good to go. Climate controls, super easy. You have your hot and cold on the left. You can set your temperature. You have your fan speed on the right. You have your direction of where you want your air. Do you want it to the floor vents? Do you want it to the dashboard vents? Or do you want it to the window vents? You can have any three of these on, any combination. You also have a specific button for max defrost in the front and your rear defrost in the back. You also have heated seats for both passenger and driver. 
our seats are high, medium, low. So three lights is high, two medium, one low, back to off. Super easy. Uh, this also does have auto where you can set it for whatever temperature you want and it'll keep the vehicle at that temperature. Now, because we have this really cool screen here, you'll notice there is a climate button where we can actually do everything we just did there up on the screen here. So you have some different options depending on where your preferences are. Right between the two dash vents, you have your emergency hazards. If you have to pull over, double park, anything like that. We're gonna skip the screen for the moment, go up to the top. You have light controls left and right. You also have a button here where you can turn all the lights on in the vehicle, including the ones in the back. When you have it in the middle position, they will operate with the door. You open your door, lights will come on. Close the door, they'll go off. If it's on off, those lights will never come on. It'll just be dark all the time, whether you open a door or close the door, doesn't matter. These are your three OnStar buttons. The first one is like prepaid phone minutes, which they don't really do anymore. It's also to tell you how much Wi-Fi data you have left, but if you buy a data plan, it's unlimited. So you really don't need this button for anything. The blue OnStar button with that green light, that's the one you would use for anything OnStar related. That's non-emergency. You wanna buy service, you wanna cancel service, you have a question, you need directions. SOS is emergency related. It goes right to OnStar's Emergency Communication Center and they can dispatch help to you and they know who you are and where you are if you have that system active. So it makes it effortless when you're out there having an emergency and you're on the road and you don't know where you are. You don't have to explain anything. They're gonna be able to help and uh, get people to your location. When you pick up your new Trailblazer, make sure the owner's manuals and books and stuff like that are in the vehicle. They're either gonna be in the glove box. Maybe they'll be inside the center console here. This does have a tray that lifts out and then a nice uh, storage that you can put in whatever you carry around in your vehicle. Now let's get to the fun stuff. Let's get to this infotainment screen here. You'll see you have a home plate on the bottom left. That's what's gonna bring you to this basic screen. You'll see grayed out right now is Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. These vehicles do come with that so you can pair your phones and have your nav and Pandora and Spotify and whatever you like on screen. We talked about a climate button which we just uh, used before. There is a settings button. This is a whole bunch of stuff you can kind of program for both your systems, your vehicle, and certain apps. So there's different things you can turn on. You go to comfort convenience, for example, your chime volume you could adjust. You have auto wipe in reverse where you can turn it on. You go to reverse, it'll wipe that back window with the wiper for you. You know, so there's a whole bunch of stuff you can kind of go to and kind of just customize. It's pretty self-explanatory. Once you change a whole bunch of stuff, you can always go back in and, and change it back if you want. You have one for apps, which is gonna be for your audio, your phone, and OnStar. Again, customize it based on how you would like to use your Trailblazer. The music note here will bring us to our radio functions. This is a radio screen that does have AM, FM, satellite radio, and you can add Bluetooth devices. It's very easy to operate because everything you see is a button. So if you want to tune, you can use your arrows here left and right, or you can press the tune icon and you can actually type in the station that you want and then just hit go, it'll bring you right to that station. If you want to set a preset, press and hold. A couple seconds, it'll, uh, it'll appear there and you can do them in any order, XM, AM, FM, whatever you'd like. Again, your source button up top will allow you to change to those different those different bands and different sources depending on what you want. One thing that did sort of change is the driver information center. You can see certain vitals on the car, but they put a status page like vehicle statuses. So your trip odometers are on this screen, your gauges for battery volts and coolant temperature can be displayed on the middle here. You even have your maintenance for tire pressures, oil life, and I believe air filter life here on this screen as well. So when you do get to a certain section, you will see show and cluster. And if you press that, it will appear on the middle here, or you can just keep it here. If I go to the phone icon, it's gonna say no phones connected. We're gonna say manage phones, add phone. And now it's looking for a phone. So I'm gonna hop on my Android phone here. It comes up under Bluetooth settings as my Chevrolet. I'm gonna press that. It does give you a six digit number. You just wanna make sure that one number matches. So as long as that number on the screen matches the number on your phone, you are pairing to the correct vehicle. Once you pair it, a lot of times you'll have a uh, third party app use, terms of use uh, message come up because we're gonna be using Android Auto. So I'm gonna say enable. And then it's gonna connect wirelessly for Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. There's also gonna be a couple messages on your phone asking if you want like uh, contacts to pair and message notifications, things like that. And then once you do that, you'll notice you have like a split screen between music and nav. You can press the nav uh, icon here and make nav full screen. It's gonna move around, zoom in, zoom out, just like you would on your phone or your tablet. 
Uh, works really well and then you can voice everything in just like you would normally do it's it's very easy to operate if you have an iphone you can turn on hey siri if you have an android you can turn on hey google and then everything's just voice there's the hey google how can i help you comes right up you'll notice that you still have your left hand menu here for the vehicle we have a secondary menu for android auto i'm going to hit the little dots there this is all the apps that you could use based on what's on your phone and what's allowed if you want to go back to chevrolet screen you hit the home plate It'll bring us back to the main menu. You can now see Android Auto is highlighted because it's actually operational because my phone is paired. Um, really, really easy system to use. And uh, I think you really enjoy it. With, between the steering wheel controls for the radio, the Hey Google, where you can just voice everything in, it really uh, really works out well. And uh, it's, really, it's really a nice, fun vehicle to drive. So again, congratulations on your brand new Chevrolet Trailblazer. I'm really happy you made this decision and made this purchase. We went over a lot today. If you have any questions or any uh, comments, concerns, throw them down below. If it's a question, I'll try to answer them all. But uh, I think we uh, think we did a good job kind of covering all the different intricacies of the 2025 Chevrolet Trailblazer.